I just posted a video automatically to TikTok and to YouTube Shorts, and I'm going to show you how to do it in this video without costing you any money. Hi, my name is Joel Lindstrom, and I regularly post about dad life and work life and the technology that we use in both of those areas. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe so you're notified when we have more content. So here is the challenge I'm trying to solve. I regularly post content to multiple platforms, YouTube, Instagram Reels, TikTok, and yeah, even TikTok. And it's a hassle to upload the same video to multiple places. You might also do videos to LinkedIn or other places. And so what I'm going to show you, this has a lot of potential to simplify your life and give you the ability to, to record the video once and have it post to multiple places. So to do this, I'm going to use a tool called Power Automate Desktop. And Power Automate Desktop is a automation tool that's included with Windows. You can download it if you have Windows 10. And if your computer meets the right specs, you may already have it if you use Windows 11 because it's automatically included with that. And Power Automate Desktop is free for Windows users. And you can create automations that will automate things you do on Windows or websites. So I created this video where I'm saying this video is automatically updated to YouTube and to TikTok. And I want to automatically post that video to TikTok and to YouTube. Let's talk about Instagram for a moment. I was also going to do Instagram Reels, but right now there's not really a great way to post Reels from a desktop. Now, there is a browser plugin that you can install, but since that works as kind of an overlay, I unfortunately was not able to get that to work but I was able to get it for multiple other services. So the first thing would be create your video and do it in the appropriate format. So for TikTok, that's a 1080 wide by 1920 tall, kind of the inverse of what you would do if you were doing it for a desktop. And then save that video somewhere on your computer. You can put it in your documents folder, whatever. If this is something that you're going to do on a regular basis, I would probably have a specific name for the video to upload and then I would have it in a specific folder like I made a folder called videos to upload on my computer so then this is my flow that I created it's going to wait for a specific file to be in that folder and then it's going to give me a dialogue where I can put in what I want to say in the description of the video and then it's going to launch a Microsoft Edge browser you can use any browser you want there's support for Chrome Firefox I like Edge for some specific reasons that I will show you later, but uh, you can use whatever you want. And then basically you go through and mimic what you do within, uh, if you were doing this manually. So you'll see here, there's a lot of different types of steps. There's UI automation, there's browser automation. Within browser automation, you can see there is, um, if, if a web page contains something, you can wait for a page open, you can launch a new, a new window, you can click on a specific item on the page. Basically anything that you, you, if you were manually going through the website. So what I'm doing is I'm launching, I'm gonna start with TikTok and then uh, go through the appropriate steps, focus on the right things, send the keys. Um, just basically go through the steps I did. So there is a recorder you can do to record yourself doing the process. Once you're comfortable with that, I prefer to map out each step, click, hit enter, keystrokes, other things like that. So now let's um, let's run it and I'll show you kind of what the end result is. So the first thing it's gonna do is display an input dialogue. I, from here, I'm going to ask for the description of the video. This is an example of how you can prompt the user for input for example, in this case, I want to be able to specify a description for the video. Any text field that I'm going to fill out or would fill out when I'm uploading a video, I could create a, uh, a prompt here, an input dialog that it would prompt and capture that as a variable. So I'm going to put this video was automatically posted, hashtag automation. And okay. So now what it's going to do is it's going to launch a browser, click the appropriate login button, and uh, log me into, in this case, TikTok. This is where if you have multi-factor authentication or whatever, you will have to work out how you want uh, to do that. But in essence, it's going through the same things I would do 
as if I was in front of the browser uploading it myself. So now it's going to launch the open dialog and then type in the path and the file name of the posts I want to upload. This is why I would recommend having a specific file. There's also a file selector dialog you can do. So you want people to browse to the file and do it. It's going to process it. There's our video. Uh, it's going to add in the caption for what uh, we typed in here just a second. And upload success. Now it's going to launch another browser. In this case, it's going to upload it to YouTube as a short. Now, one trick I learned in doing this is you don't have to go to YouTube and click the upload button. You know, youtube.com slash upload. And you learn a lot in doing this of how to save steps. You learn actually how to go through things quicker. And so I find by doing automation processes, I become a lot more efficient in my day-to-day -day life, even for things I don't automate, because you just learn how to take the shortest path through the application. So now it's going to fill out the form and go through the different tabs and then it's going to hit the save button to publish the video. Now you can see my video is published. Next, it's going to close the web browsers and be done. So here are some things that to keep in mind as you're doing this. Number one, keyboard shortcuts are your friend. So for example, if you need to go through multiple fields on a form like I did, Instead of clicking each one and typing into it, the easiest thing is to click the first one, or sometimes the form automatically selects the first one, and then count the tabs between them to, to go to the different fields. And if you do that, it can run a lot faster. You saw when it went through YouTube, it was going through tabbing, spacing, tabbing, up, down to do the radio buttons. That's a lot faster. Second thing is find the shortest path to do that. So as I mentioned earlier, instead of launching the site, then clicking an upload button, just see if there's a way to get there directly as uh, go, to the, go to the upload. Um, same thing like the save and load files. Those are kind of difficult to work with. But what I realize is when it pops up, either saving a file or loading a file, you can type the entire path of the file into that file name field and it works like a charm. Then you just have to wait for that window. And there's some great smarter wait steps it has like wait for a file or wait for a window. And when you wait for the window, you can then select that or set the focus to that window when it opens and then just enter in the text in the file name field, which is automatically selected and hit the enter key. So by doing that, I now can save a ton of time when I have a video, I just have to produce the video once, put it where I want it, launch the flow and go. I'll probably enhance that a little bit more. For example, there's a couple other fields like I'll want to have tags or I want to have more of a description, uh, but the base process is great and uh, we'll save a bunch of time. My name is Joel Lindstrom. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thank you. See you next time.